Hey everybody, what is up? Tim here, back again for Droid Life. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. As you can see, it's a very big day. It's Pixel 7 day. Uh, I, I got the Pixel 7 Pro in front of me. This phone should be arriving on doorsteps across the country this week. So if you, like me, have a Pixel 7 Pro coming, uh, this video is for you. This is our first 10 things to do with the Pixel 7 Pro. Okay, so we have got the phone out of the box, we're getting it all set up, all that groovy stuff. You've got your Google account loaded up, you've downloaded your apps. Now it's time to really make this thing yours, okay? Uh, first thing we usually talk about is security. So first thing we'll do is we will jump right into that settings menu here. I don't mind my Bob's Burgers soundtrack going, I've been jamming to that lately. Uh, we're gonna dive right into the settings and then security. Under security, this is where you're going to find uh, pretty much anything that has to do with that lock screen or even just sort of the general security of the device So security updates find my device app security, etc. Right now We're gonna focus on that enhanced biometrics that we've been seeing on this device um, as as we've noticed personally uh, This device has better biometrics so a better fingerprint reader. It's faster Possibly more accurate, you know, we're not getting that where you touch it and then it just kind of like it shakes and says Meh, not recognized like how dare you uh, you're mine. Um, so we will go right into face and fingerprint unlock and this is where you're going to find not only the fingerprint but that face unlock. Uh, during that initial setup process it's going to ask if you want to add a fingerprint. It's going to ask if you want to add facial recognition. If you didn't get through that in the actual setup process now's the time to do it. So you can add your face here. You're going to find all the options for it here. You can actually delete the original face model that you set, reset it. You can find uh, additional settings for the feature like requiring uh, your eyes to be open, skipping the lock screen, all that. I don't want to skip the lock screen, I want it just to unlock and then I can swipe up into it just to sort of like kind of gives that, uh, I don't know, added layer before I get into the actual UI. I don't want to accidentally do something on the device I didn't want to do. Um, so there's face unlock, then right below that of course is fingerprint unlock. Now, if you've been on the channel for a little bit, you may know we like to have multiple fingers because when it's, say, placed down, who knows what finger I'm going to attack my phone with first, right? Sometimes it's my, if I pick it up, it's that thumb. If it's just sitting there on the table, I want to go right index finger because it's not really, like, I don't know, ergonomical <laughs> to, like, go meh with my thumb, like, and green thumb that thing. Um, shout out to the troll in Manhattan or whatever that movie was back in the day. Uh, and then, uh, so right here, you can just add a fingerprint. Obviously, adding a fingerprint on these phones is ridiculously quick and easy. You just give it a few taps, whatever finger you want, and then boom, it's going to be added. Uh, and then, of course, you can click on that, rename it however you see fit. Easy peasy. Uh, moving out of sort of adding your face and adding a finger if you look down a little bit further we've got more security settings these sneaky people at google we love them uh that first option is smart lock smart lock absolutely awesome it, like this is always like one of those number one things we talk about when setting up a new device when you've got that new device set up trusted places add your home add your work if that's an appropriate place to do it when you add a trusted place whenever you're in the geofence of that uh address that you set in smart lock the phone will remain unlocked i will say over the years smart lock has uh regressed a, a slightly bit like sometimes it's just it's like a little janky or just won't work and if i go in toggle it off and then back on it seems to start working again just fine uh but for that initial like that first initial toggle it works exceptionally well so when i'm here just at home on my own wi-fi uh Wi-Fi here at the home or whatever I'm at my address I just want it to stay unlocked and not have to keep looking at it with my face or unlocking it with my fingers I can just set on trusted places um, Trusted devices is also on here. So if I've got my uh, Pixel watch or whatever device on and that Bluetooth connection is paired or my galaxy buds Whatever then the phone will also remain unlocked. So get into smart unlock Definitely look at uh, kind of setting up that security, getting yourself ready to go uh, in terms of being more secure on your Pixel 7 Pro. Since we are talking about security, might as well dive into uh, safety and emergency. So safety and emergency, that's where you're going to find that emergency SOS, car crash detection, crisis alerts, 
all that. Just know that these features need to have your location settings always on. Um, so that way it will know in the event of an emergency where you are, etc. It can track all that information. Uh, sometimes, like, you might think that, oh, that's going to mess with my battery or anything like that. I haven't noticed that, um, but it is something you'll just have to come in here and toggle it on. It does not come on automatically out of the box, so you'll have to say, okay, I want to update my location, allow all the time, back out of it. Um, yep, it's going to need to know. It's going to be listening uh, for a car crash, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, and then, so if you don't respond, then you can set up what's going to happen, right? It's going to try dialing 911. It's also uh, going to ask you for emergency contact. So I set my wife up, uh, medical information, bl blood type, etc. Uh, what type of allergies you may have. For me, it's sulfa medication. I don't know if I should say that publicly. I don't think it matters. Don't try and drug me, please. Uh, so you've got a uh, crisis alert that again will also need your uh, personal location uh, that way if something is happening around you it's going to know oh hey you're in that area here's a crisis alert for you uh, this is also where you're going to find a uh, wireless emergency alerts I know some people like to turn these off however I mean shame on you right um, God forbid something happens like an amber alert or something that affects you you want to you want to get these like severe threats to life and property amber alerts public safety messages these are all like important things right they make our society go around <laughs> so go ahead have those enabled or if you want to disable them they're right there wireless emergency alerts and just disable allow alerts that's under safety and emergency all right, now that we've got security, all that mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's start. Uh, let's talk about making this phone ours with that kind of customization. First thing, so we're gonna go to the uh, home screen here. Out of the box, I was a little surprised. The phone was set up for a four by four grid, and I was like, "Where do I fix that?" Uh, because if you go in and you long press on there and go home settings, where you think that grid should be, it's actually not there. And I was very confused at first. So I hit up Kellen. I was like, "Dude, am I just like, am I stupid?" And he confirmed, yes, I am stupid. Uh, so you go ahead, long screen that, but then long press on that home screen, but then under wallpaper and style, then if you scroll down, boom, you've got your app grid. So the first thing I do is I set that bad boy to five by five. That way, then I can start adding my icons, adding my widgets, etc. So I go five by five, but of course you can choose a four by four, four by five, three by three, heck, even a two by two if you really need some huge, gorgeous app icons on your screen. So there's the app grid for you. Then, obviously, since we're already here, let's talk about wallpaper and style. Android 13 being what it is, freaking amazing. Uh, you can change your wallpaper and then that style can automatically change for you, right? So let's say, right now, I've got this green wallpaper. I can choose different styles here. It's beautiful, it's super bright, it's crazy cool. You can have more of a contrast vibe if you want, which is totally great. I'm going to go with that basic green here, but then you've got basic colors as well. So you can choose whatever color you want. It's just more like these, these, this palette is always available to you. Then, of course, you've got the dark theme, which is, you know, kind of my way to roll. But then you've got the themed icons. My only, I, and I say only if the uh, camera will go ahead and focus for me. I say my only, but in actuality, I have a big problem with themed icons simply because I like having Twitter and Facebook on my home screen. And if you'll see here, uh, Twitter and Facebook do not support the themed icons quite yet. So that can be a little annoying, uh, especially if you have apps that you use often and want to use the themed icons because they look great, but not every app supports them. So we're like kind of waiting for developers to like, you know, get their stuff together and support Android 13 the way it should be because when you've got a whole theme going and everything's looking all green or purple or whatever you want, it's a really gorgeous experience. So kind of hoping that the developers uh, jump on board quickly and start supporting that stuff. Uh, next up, let's talk about system toggles. System toggles right here in this pull down section. Uh, you can customize these, right? So we have a couple of pages here. Oh, it's beautiful, extra dim, whatever. All these great system toggles. Go ahead, customize the, uh, customize these to how you see fit. You can go ahead, click on that little pencil pen there down in the corner, and now you can edit. You can click, drag, drop. Then you can also bring up new ones. There's a whole bunch of hidden ones. Oh, pro tip. 
Uh, you've got alarm, hotspot, data saver, battery share, one-handed mode. That's gonna be great for someone you know with the smaller hands uh, using the big old Pixel 7 Pro. Uh, go ahead, use that one-handed mode. You've got sound amplifier, recorder, a whole bunch of different options here. Plus, a lot of smart devices also allow for them to be like their own little toggles down here, like my Yeet lights. So I can just have quick controls in there if I don't want to actually dive into my home like my actual smart home devices like overview here so go ahead you can drag drop rearrange do whatever you want on there i think it's wonderful um and then also i guess just to show you real quick sort of that home stuff this stuff works really well being able to quickly dive in to like whatever home settings i have checking my front door and all that stuff absolutely love it so if you have any like nest hub uh nest yale lock whatever it may be set all that stuff up make sure it's got on the right account and all that like being able to access that stuff quickly right from like the system toggles super clean super clutch so thank you for that google lastly let's talk about those home settings so dive back into the home settings long press click home settings this is where you're going to find a few more things, right? So this is where you're going to find access to the Google app by swiping right. You can disable or enable that. You got your notification dots, those little dots that appear on a notification uh, or on an app icon when a new notification comes in. You can enable, disable. At a glance, you can choose what comes in via that at a glance, which is that top left widget there. Package delivery, fitness stuff, a whole bunch of great stuff at a glance. It's all there. Sensitive content on the lock screen, you can choose whether to enable or disable that. Uh, also, oops, didn't mean to go all the way out. You've got uh, suggestions. So the suggestions, if you have, let's say you move an icon out of this base and bring it up here, it's going to suggest, oh, you should have YouTube music. Clearly, it's not like the smartest feature in the world because I already have YouTube music here, but those suggestions will pop up on this lower bar and they'll also pop up here. Like these are obviously the apps I use the most. Uh, not embarrassing at all. Like I talk smack about social media all the time, yet here I am using it constantly. So I am a hypocrite. Everybody knows this. So being able to dive into your home settings, kind of customize what you want your phone to look like, how you want it to behave, obviously one of the first 10 things you should do when you pick up the Pixel 7 Pro. All right, now that we've got the phone looking exactly how we want it to, fantastic. We're gonna dive back into the settings and let's go over uh, gestures. So if you go down into system, scroll down just a little bit, you don't even really need to scroll, just look down a little bit, you've got gestures. This phone can do a ton of stuff without actually like you having to do anything, right? So you can quickly open the camera by double tapping on that power button. You can quick tap to start action. So tapping the back of the phone that will enable, get out of here. You can enable um, digital assistant, you can, which is Google assistant. You can play or pause media. There's like, you can show your notifications, toggle the flashlight. So using that double tap is like a really helpful gesture that you can set up. You can flip the camera for a selfie, uh, tap to check phone, which of course, like if your phone is just sitting there and you tap it, boom, the screen is going to turn on. Super helpful. But this is also where you can access your system navigation. Now, I know some people are still on that three button life. Bless your hearts. I think that's great for you. Um, but if you uh, don't want that gesture navigation, boom, right here, three button navigation. And then you can hold home for assistant. Like this is old school stuff, man. This like takes me back to the Kit Kat days. So fantastic. A uh, lot of gestures in here to play with. This is also where you want to find that press and hold power button. Um, so you can hold that down for assistant. You can disable that, but then you can also change the duration for how long you have to hold it for assistant. So if you long press it, boom, here comes assistant. So a lot of fun little things you can tweak in here when you're setting up the device to really, again, make the device your own. Um, if you come right back out in the system, so just to show everyone, like I'm in the settings menu, I scroll down there's system, and then I look at rules. Rules are something that I never used to set up because I lived a hermit crab life and I never went anywhere, but now rules are awesome. When I go, say to the gym for example, uh, and I want to, I want my phone to do something in particular, for example, uh, enable do not disturb. Super easy with rules. I can quickly, I can quickly, I can quickly uh, tap that new rule. I can add uh, when I'm on a saved uh, Wi-Fi network. So for example, I'll go to my gym, I'll click that. And so here's what I want to happen when I hit that network. I want 
the phone to turn to do not disturb or I want it set to silent, ring, etc. Can have a notification sent when that rule takes place or not. The same thing can happen when you go to an actual um, location. I would show you what happens, but then it's going to pop up my address. But anything can happen, so you can set any location in the world. It just uses Google Maps, and it says where do you want it to set it to. And so when you hit that particular location or that Wi-Fi network, you can have your phone do one of these particular things. So super helpful if you get to work, like, oh, okay, I've set my phone to vibrate now. Or you're a child, and you get to school, and you don't want your phone buzzing throughout the day. Um, you're a super popular kid, what have you. Uh, you know, when you hit your school's Wi-Fi or you get to that location, that GPS coordination coordinate, um, you can have your phone set to silent or whatever you need it to do. So, super helpful there. Uh, scrolling back out, let's go into sounds and vibration. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, we have adaptive sound, something I'd like to enable. It uses the phone's microphone to kind of pick up what the sound or the acoustics are like in any given environment you are in. Uh, it actually is noticeable, I would say, like if you have it disabled, just sitting on a table and then enable it, you you may notice the phone like gets louder or brighter, like the speaker just sounds a little bit better. It's just something I enable. Right under adaptive sound, now playing. Now playing allows me to be like the musical genius my friends think I am, right? So we're sitting out like at a bar or at a restaurant and a song comes on and like, oh man, what song is this? I quickly glance down to my phone and I see the now playing what's on the bottom. I'm like, oh, this is blah, blah, blah by blah, blah, blah. And they're like, man, Tim, you know, every song, every artist, it's incredible. Yeah, it's because I use now playing on my pixel phone, you silly fool. Um, and I recommend you use it too. I think it's super helpful. You've got a history of what you've listened to. So let's say, oh man, what was that song I was rocking out to in the car last night? Well, obviously it was Shoots and Ladders by Corn or Diggy Diggy Hole by Windrose. Obviously uh, a lot of different songs here. Oh yeah, Bob's Burgers, etc. Your songs will likely be different because you and I have different musical tastes and that's totally fine. My point is you've got to use Now Playing. Highly recommend. Lastly, let's talk about the camera. I gotta get out my little thing here because we're gonna show off some macro mode. Uh, for the camera, there's just a couple of things, right? Obviously, we all know the camera is awesome, but one of the things I wanted to talk about is the auto macro mode that kind of comes out of the box, right? So at first, I was very confused. I was like, where is macro mode? Because it's not actually a mode that we have down here at the bottom. So instead, what you do is you have to use your camera out of the box again and then hold something very close and then it automatically switches to macro mode. Now, if this is something you do not appreciate, you can actually go into the settings, you can scroll down a little bit and then right there is auto macro and you can disable that. Now, whenever you are getting close to something, let's say I'm super close and it's like, oh, macro is off boom, I can click that little flower and now it's gonna switch to macro mode. Super helpful. Also something that is super helpful, let's say I take a picture, boom, boom. Now let's say, what do I want, uh, where do I want that uh, photo to be stored? What I can do is I can long press on that preview, save it to my default storage space, which is just the photo gallery, or I can send it straight to a locked folder. Super helpful. I've been absolutely loving locked folders on these devices. Obviously not going to tell you why, but absolutely love it. So being able to access that just from a quick long press on there, super helpful. So everyone here who's probably picking up a Pixel 7 Pro knows what the camera's like. The UI is very, I would say, simplistic, but it's easy to use, easy to jump through. I don't need to show you a bunch of stuff. I'll save that for a later time. Um, I just really wanted to kind of show what I do personally to set up my device real quickly, get it looking the way I want, behaving the way I want, and that's it. That's my first uh, you know, 10 plus things to do with the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. Obviously, a lot of the stuff I said applies directly to the Pixel 7, so don't worry. If you got the Pixel 7 and you're feeling a little left out because I didn't mention it, that stuff applies just as much to that phone as it does this new phone. So, speaking of which, Gorgeous phone, right? Congratulations to everyone who has one coming. I think you're gonna like it. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comments. We'll try and field them. Until then, we're Droid Life. Peace.